Okay, so in this R20 feature video, we are going to look at the CAD import. So I'm just going to go to File and Open. I'm going to look at my desktop where you can see that I've got some demo CAD files there. And we've got a few different files that we can look at, anything from a 32 meg file all the way up to, you know, we've got 286, um, a 6 meg simple one there. So we've got a few files that we can look at. I'm just going to click file on the front step there and do file and open and you can see that we now get these step import settings. So you've got a few options that you can choose from looking at things like original units, what exactly sort of stuff you want to bring in from the step file, hidden objects, helper objects, so on and so forth. You know where you're going to base your normal tags on display colors. That's quite a useful one, which we will get to in a minute, you know, layers, materials as well as that. So whether or not you want to combine by color and topology, depending on what your original file was like, tessellation, source mesh, and detailing as well. This is quite an important one here. So if I just click OK, Cinema 4D will go away and it will read that step file data and it will then bring that information into Cinema 4D. Now I know there are other processes that people have had to do this in the past using other alternative pieces of software, but Cinema 4D is now able to do this on its own and it is able to do it quite fast. There you go. Quite quickly that has been able to bring that front assembly information in. And we can see that it is made up of various different elements, which is made up of other parts of um, polygonal elements. It's also been able to recognize instances as well. So we are getting that information in without Cinema 4D, having to recreate and think other things, uh, each individual element, we're recognizing the fact that these are an instance object. Now, whilst it's been able to bring that geometry in okay, we've noticed that perhaps some of the information is a little bit polygonal and it hasn't been, um, quite as nicely brought in as perhaps it could have been. And that's to do with the information and the, the settings that we that we have. So I'm just gonna close that again. No, I do not wish to save it. And I'm going to file and open that step file again. Only this time I'm gonna choose a couple of different settings just to show you what they do. So display colors, um, random is quite a good one because it means that you can see all of the different areas um, and all of the different objects in one go. If you're gonna go back and texture later, it's quite useful to see. And I've got the original detailing here, but if I did something like high and click okay, then when Cinema 4D goes away and does its process, and once it brings in the, Cinema, the, um, the CAD file, you'll see the difference it makes with the colors. So all of the different elements will be randomly colored and you will be able to see hopefully that there is a, a, an increase in topology detail, which should mean that things work, uh, uh, that the information in there is a bit better. So there we go. We can see that we've got our nice um, pastel shaded wheel axle. But if we look in things like the, the nut there, and bolt, you can see we've got a much better topology. It's much more circular rather than the sort of hexagonal look that we had earlier. Okay, so this means that you can then move that forward. You know, you can texture it, light it up, render it out, you know, maybe use, you know, give Pro Render a go, and you'll be able to take these CAD models that stage further in Cinema 4D than you were able to do before or without needing any intervening steps. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe or check out blog.maxon.co.uk.